All right. Uh, welcome to uh, Web Dev Web Dev Bakes, Basics. I don't know what we're calling this. We're doing a little coding, some web development. Uh, my name's Kevin. This is my friend Gabe. How's it going? Uh, and Gabe is somebody who is just uh, starting to learn about web development, doing some tutorials on H HTML and CSS right now. Have you gotten beyond CSS yet? No. The, no. Okay. So you're still, yes, still in the build, basic building block stuff. Very much so. So um, uh, last time we talked about uh, uh, HTML, and you had some questions about HTML. We also, you also had some questions about CSS, and, and I started to show you a little bit about CSS. You hadn't really done much CSS. So, so tell me, you, you spent, uh, I don't know how much, how many lessons or how many hours looking at this, the CSS stuff now. Uh, what are your impressions of CSS? And what are your, um, do you have any questions about CSS? Um, I've only spent uh, probably a little over a couple hours. Um, like watching CSS tutorials and trying to do different things with it. Um, it's, you know, I'm not a very like visual, um, visually artistic person. And I don't really put a lot into like image, even like self image. <laughs> it's not a like, big part of my life. Um, so CSS is, is not, definitely one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely like the HTML aspect more than CSS right now, but I understand how they're, they're married very much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, both are necessary, but I don't want to become like a designer. Mm -hmm. So I think that CSS is, you know, definitely appeals to the designer type quite a bit more than someone like me. Um, yeah. yeah. Long term, I want my goal to be able to like be more create functionality mm -hmm. and understand how to like develop apps or games rather yeah. than make them look pretty. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, the the way that uh, I th the way that it works at our company, and I think I assume at most companies, is that uh, there are designers. And the designers work, um, they lay stuff out and they design also the sort of interactions and behavior. Um, they, they use CSS uh, as one of the, you know, in part of how they lay stuff out, but it's not purely CSS. So you end up getting stuff which are these sort of interactive graphics, mostly just pictures, but interactive graphics to... Um, sort of show you how things are supposed to look and how they're supposed to, um, the flow of the application. You know, when you click this button, this happens. When you click this button, this happens. So they're sort of like taking the ideas from product about what features we're taking and then actually designing the UI to how it looks, right? Uh, the engineers, though, are the ones kind of stuck, at least where we are, um, <laughs> Uh, figuring out a lot of the CSS. So it's not like they figure out all the CSS for you and then hand it to you. I think there are probably um, different kinds of design systems or different kinds of design to engineering workflows where you have designers who are basically doing tweaking the CSS and really, or providing you with, you know, very clear, like we want this much padding and we want it this, this kind of margin and we want exactly this size font and I mean they do kind of give that to us but they don't give it to us really in the form of CSS that we can just sort of plug in right so if you if you end up doing front-end web development you have to kind of know CSS you don't have to be great at it um, uh, but yeah and there's and but there's also things like if if you that's when you're trying to implement somebody else's design right um, there are also tools like um, one of the oldest tools like this is called Bootstrap, and I think it's pro it's in that tu there's a section on Bootstrap in that tutorial or those okay. lessons that you're working through, um, and there's many others that have been, been invented since um, that allow you to kind of it, it's like getting a, a, a whole s toolbox of CSS pre-made, uh, okay. so you don't have to 
you know, you can, it, it's one reason, like once you start using bootstrap, you will realize like why 10 years ago, every website looked the same because they were all using bootstrap <laughs> and there's still a lot of websites using bootstrap today. We actually use some bootstrap in our, in our stack, but, um, but uh, there's less pure bootstrap out there, but it's still a great tool to just be like, I just need something that looks kind of professional and presentable. The website that I made for under the gun where, where we both performed uh, uh, had bootstrap built into it. I'm pretty sure I think we used bootstrap. So yeah. one thing I like about learning web development is it's like, you go way back in time on the internet and then you're just trying to get to the present. <laughs> yeah. Web development has been going. Yeah. I mean, if you had like, if you had previously had a coding background, it might be, but not really web development. It might be interesting to try and just jump, you know, jump on the speeding train, which is web development. Right. And just start w learning the most, the latest tools. But I think, uh, I think there's a lot to be gained by learning just the the learning just the the three basic pieces of web development and seeing how they work together uh, before starting to do other things. Because one of the nice things about ha having this history, like I I started, I was coding as a kid for fun before the World Wide Web happened. Right, so um, I when the World Wide Web came along, it's like oh this is great, and I started doing things with HTML and stuff. But very quickly, I started to think like, I wish, like back then it was like every single web page was its own HTML file. And there's still websites like this. You know, there's a, there's a index file, there's an about file, there's an FAQ file, there's, you know, old 90s websites almost always had an individual page for every page. And so that meant things like, well, you want every page to have the same menu and you want every page to have the same footer and the first websites I made, you basically just copy and pasted those elements from file to file to file. And so once you had like 20 pages, you needed to change something. Change. And you got to change 20 different files, you know. So there's there's a pain of that that sort of leads you to things like PHP, which is an old uh, a sort of HTML slash scripting hybrid thing where you can kind of write HTML, but then slip code into the middle of the HTML to sort of customize it as it's being rendered, as it's being served, not rendered. It all happens on the server side. And so that's when you start getting bulletin boards and you get WordPress and you get, so there's a bunch of stuff, innovations that happen with that. But then eventually you start to feel like, ah, oh, I wish I could do more on the server side. So doing this time traveling, like you're talking about, I think is really cool because you, 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 not that you should spend two years doing HTML and CSS, not at all, two weeks maybe, um, be before you jump MySpace. in. What's that? I just want to be able to make MySpace. <laughs> you're not too far away from that. <laughs> um, but uh, it's good to sort of feel the pain of certain things to be like, oh, you know, like, like what we're doing right now at work, we have a Ruby on Rails backend, and we have what that means is is we have these well defined routes on the backend where uh, you want to get certain information from our database. You want to get certain information about classes, or or in, we you know we serve up courses, so there might be questions and and passages and flashcards and so forth. So it's pulling these very specific things from the from the from the web. Um, and it does it in a certain way that was really kind of uh, extremely powerful when it was introduced, especially. But after you do that for a while, you start to realize, like, wouldn't it be nice if instead of creating a route for every single thing you need, the front end could just ask for what it needs and the back end would go, here it is. Like, you don't have to write a single, a, a, you don't have to write several routes for questions and answers and flashcards and all these different routes. And so there are now these technologies that are getting ex, uh, sort of um, popular now where they work pretty much like that. Instead of defining all these different specific routes to get the information you want, you sort of describe from the, on the back end what is possible. Like you can get these things with these attributes 
And then the front end says, great, I, I want these two things. And so it just asks for those two things and gets it. Um, so basically, like the history of web development is this sort of history of you get a tool, it's really fun and cool, and you can do great things with it. But eventually, after working with it for a while, you hit these pain points. And so some people just dealt with the pain points and other people invented new technologies to make those pain points easier. And so as we go along, it, get, it gets easier. It, in some ways it gets easier, but, uh, or it gets smoother, you know, um, because the, the common problems that people have dealt with uh, have been solved to a great, great extent. But yeah, I think it's, it is a good thing to kind of start where you're starting um, I, I did see people who went into coding boot camp, who had never really written a, a created even a very basic website. So they were jumping right in and learning JavaScript without really knowing how what JavaScript is used for. If that makes any sense, I mean JavaScript is this very now it's a it's a multi purpose. Uh, language that's used to write servers, to write websites, to write, uh, you know, you could, you can use it to write the software that runs your refrigerator or runs a, a, uh, um, uh, an automobile engine or something, you know, like you can use JavaScript anywhere now. Um, but I think knowing the kind of historical way in which JavaScript came about and how it interacts with a website specifically is really uh, a good place to start. Yeah. That's fair. So what, uh, what was, uh, did you have, have any questions after going through all the CSS stuff? Um, just one really. Okay. And it has to do with, um, floating as one of the exercises is, uh, to create an image gallery and, uh, on the tutorial that I'm using, it gives you the links for all of the images, but all of the images, or when you went to that, it, it no longer existed. It's kind of an older tutorial. Oh, so so I the source bunch, code was gone? Yeah. Okay. So I used a bunch of my own images that I had okay. and tried to replicate what he does to create an, an image gallery where everything is equally spaced. But for some reason, it's leaving gigantic gaps. And okay. it's not gigantic, but it's leaving gaps where other images should be. And I don't understand why. So I was hoping we could troubleshoot that. Is there, well, let's see. So you're on a computer today. So you, mm -hmm. could, you could potentially share your screen. OK. Uh, you want to do that? Sure. All right, let me switch. Let me switch over just here. And. Uh... To just, just gonna do that. I will stop presenting. So you should be able to present now. Okay. Here. Ah, screw it. We'll just my entire screen. See, this is the problem of, uh, of being able to, uh, <laughs> people could jump into our Google Meet if they, I guess they have to ask permission, but when we get really popular, Gabe, we're going to have to deal with this problem. Yeah, okay. Can you see my screen? I can. Okay. Okay. Gabe's images. So here are all my image codes and all the images are showing up um, okay. and then the exercise was to you know have margins and have uh, have them all float so that they can grid um, easily but I don't understand where I went wrong where they're now leaving you know two spaces here a space here a space right, here right. so let's go to um... Let's go to your layout here. You basically have a paragraph followed by a bunch of images. Yeah. Okay, great. So very simple layout, basically. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's go to photo grid, photo grid. 
and let's go to your image. So each one is 30%. Mm -hmm. Each one floats left and then has a margin of 166. So you're, it's, you're attempting to get to 100%, right? Mm -hmm. What happens when you change the width to, or change the margin to 1%, let's say? Oops. Still kind of not yeah. interesting. And everything is floating left. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. It seems Maybe this is this is what we're talking about with CSS. Like that all seems reasonable. <laughs> I'm I'm sure people who know CSS really well are looking at it already and going, I know what's going on there. I know what's wrong. Um so let's uh let's inspect one of the pictures. All right, so we have this picture and we have styles. We have very simple, that's the only styles. Uh, why don't, you see how there's check marks next to things? Yep. Uh, uncheck uh, width. Okay, really too big. Okay, so check that again. And float, ooh, float looks fine, right? Yeah, they float off. And margin, it just makes it, yeah. So the idea with uh, what was your what was the what was your goal here? It was it, were you specifically supposed to use float? Yeah, to it was basically make the image gallery look like this, but using float and with margins. Interesting. What happens if you float right? Okay. Oh, gaps pop over here. So Scare they're and they're 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 sort of going to the r opposite side, right? Oh, mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Okay. So so go back to float left. I think I know what's going on here, and then try margin, uh, two percent. Oh, it's hmm. still kind of off and weird, though, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, try a half percent. Okay, so um, you see in the uh, where it says doc type, and then P gave images, and then images, right? So hover over one of the images. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you can sort of see how the margin is is out, right? Mm -hmm. Around it, and then yeah. go down to the next image. So start at the top image. Hover over the first image. Okay, so yeah. it floats that left. It floats the next one left. And it floats the next one left. And then it then the fourth one, instead of starting a brand new line, it see, I think what's happening is that the fourth one, I don't know what's happening actually. Why isn't it not? Hmm. The thing is here's the thing about this float left stuff and float right is that there are better ways to do this now. Way better ways to do this now. I believe you. Um, there's this thing called Flexbox, which is really, really cool. I don't know. I don't know. I the Flexbox is this thing that's in this is one of these pain points. So, you know, ten years ago Flexbox did not exist or it didn't exist on most browsers at least, right? Um and the and this kind of stuff was, you know, commonly a problem. Well, if you turn off float though, that's the thing that's uh, annoying. It's like if you turn off float, then it does what you want it to do, right? Like yeah. that's it. 
right? Mm -hmm. So why do we need to use float? <laughs> Float yeah, is what? normally like, here's what you would do. So I'll show you what float is normally used for. So okay. uh, go back to the HTML. Okay. And uh, create a paragraph. And just we just and just grab a paragraph of text somewhere from, it doesn't matter where it is. Just a paragraph of text something. <laughs> Bacon Ibsen. Okay. Grab that. Okay. Um, grab the first image okay. and put it the line above the paragraph. Yeah, right there. Okay. And then can you come out uh, comment out all the other images so they don't show up? Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think they won't show up now. So if you reload the page. Okay. So you see how it's floating left, right? Oh, why wow, that, that <laughs> paragraph is really... <laughs> um, great. So now take that same image and put it, cut it, and, and then put it somewhere in the paragraph. I think uh, float is still turned off. Is that how we want it? Oh, no, we want float on. OK. Sorry. OK. OK, so why is the paragraph like that? Can, it, can I look at the paragraph, CSS? Can you just comment out the paragraph for CSS? <laughs> Okay. Okay, cool. So you see this is you see this all the time on on uh, websites and so forth. So you have a paragraph and then you have an image in it and the paragraph just sort of flows around it. That's what float left is made for. In my okay. in my opinion. Like that's you float left, you float right and then you can sort of include fo photos inside um, paragraphs and it's kind of this nice way where the paragraph just flows around it. Right? Okay. Uh, I wonder if he's going to cover Flexbox. So go to uh, so let's let's uh, let's get rid of the paragraph and just go back to your list of images again. Okay. Okay. So reload the page. Great, Gabe's images. Um, so go over to the photograph grid, the CSS now. Okay. And let's get rid of uh, the margin and the float. Just leave the width so that they're relatively small sized. Um, actually, get rid of the width for a second. Get rid of the width for a second. Let's just let's just have fresh. Okay. So now go to photograph HTML. Okay. And I want you to wrap. Uh, all those images in a div. So open a div on line 13 and then close it on line, you know, the new line 31. Okay. So reload the page. It shouldn't be any different. Yep. Okay. Now go to the CSS and do uh, div brackets. And then the what we're changing is um, display. Okay is the property, and then you do colon grid, or not grid, uh, flex. And then, uh, yeah. Okay, so re, re, uh, reload. All right. Okay, nothing, uh, does that really change anything? It did not. Display flex. I feel like that should have put them all in one column. Maybe the images are just too damn big. Uh, try try width, uh, putting that width back in for a second. And now do it. Okay, 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was putting them all in one column, but it's one huge or one row, but it's this huge row. Okay. So Flexbox is like by default, if you just turn Flex on, it takes all the things inside of it and creates a row from them. And so without okay. the width 30, it was creating this huge long row. Okay. So let's mm -hmm. go to a page. If you Google CSS Flex Box Trick Tricks. And you'll come to a complete, yeah, that's it. So let's play around a little bit with this because Flexbox is this great way to sort of lay things out in rows and columns and stuff. Uh, all right, so if you go down, scroll down, by poster. Interesting. So we've done the first step, container, display, flex, right? <laughs> so the next thing you want to do is let's try flex direction. So flex direction and try column. Do I just do it below? Yep. Okay. Now we'll reload your site. See how it changes. Now it's a okay. column of 30% images. Okay. So go back to CSS or let's uh let's make it a row again okay so should I change this to row or just eh, whichever you can you can leave it there and just change it to row or comment it out whatever it doesn't okay. matter okay keep going down let's see what the next little part of this flex wrap so let's do flex wrap flex wrap wrap now let's see what happens So now it lays uh -huh. it out three at a time and it gives you that those the rows your the columns and stuff you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, because you have width 30, it's going to always have three per row. Now let's go if we look at CS, the flex thing again. Oh, okay. Um, let's keep going down. What's the next trick? Flex flow. Uh, I don't know. Flex is shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap. So. So you could do it that in one step. You could say flex, flow, column wrap. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know what that would do. Is it gonna? That would be kind of. Let's see what happens. Oh. I think you maybe have to define how how tall the div is in order for it to wrap, because it'll just keep flowing down the page. Oh. So if you put if you said width. Or if you said height, 90% or something like that, maybe. Did that reload? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Or how about height? Uh, uh, let's try 500 pixels. Yeah, so that gives okay. you the wrap. So it's it, it it goes column, 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 and then the last two on the last column, right? Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the next thing? Ooh, flex. Yes, great. So let's do uh, let's do space between. So this is justify content space between, and maybe get rid of the column wrap and height. Or it doesn't matter, but let's just leave it there and see what happens. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, so so now okay. it creates even spaces in between them. And okay. you so you can have you can justify it in different ways. If you want things if you want things to be let's say you have just one here's a nice trick. Like you know you have a nav bar at the top of a page, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes there's like a logo on one side and on the other side there's like a menu a drop down menu, right? Sure. Um, so one way you can do that is you can have a flex box row at the top of your page. You can have a logo and then you have the drop down menu. So those are the two, those are the two divs in between these two mm -hmm. spots. And then you just say, I think it's space between is the justify contents space. Is it space between? Can you go mm -hmm. back to CSS tricks? 
Uh, yeah, I think it's space between. And then when there's only two elements, it means it just pushes them to the side. One all the way to the left, one all the way to the right, and all, this, all the empty space is in between them. Um, and then what you could do, now notice, let's say you had, um, so let's say you had, uh, uh, here, you want to, why don't you, can you uh, stop sharing and I'll, I'll take over for a little bit? Oh, I need to bring up VS Code again. Oop, not Valorant. No, I don't want to play Valorant right now. Oh no, it's starting Valorant. Stop. Close. I tried that game once. It was fun. What game was it? Valorant. Did you ever like um, Counter Strike? Uh, yeah, I was never really good at first-person shooters, but. Uh, yeah, Counter Strike was really fun. I thought because it was like, it um. It was these like very short rounds, you know, so you could just sort of play short rounds over and over again. And, and mostly it was like you, you played until uh, you had like a, 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 a specific objective, either to eliminate the other side or like grab, a, plant a bomb or something. I don't know. Anyway, it had these very simple objectives, straightforward objectives and very short rounds. So you could kind of play. It's, it's kind of like the same thing with Hearthstone, right? Hearthstone has these very relatively short rounds. You can always play one more game. You can always play one more game. Always play one more game. Same thing with Counter-Strike. You didn't. It wasn't like devoting an hour or something. Each game was like, I don't know, 10 minutes, and then it was over, maybe even shorter than that. Anyway, yeah. Valorant is like, feels like Counter-Strike to me, but with like the kind of you know, like more like specialized characters with specialized abilities like, um, oh shoot, what is that Blizzard game? That's really popular. What's that? Heroes of the Storm? No, that's more of a top-down shit, uh, right? <laughs> Heroes of the Storm? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we're not here to talk about games. That was a total misclick. <laughs> um, all right, let me... Oh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, present entire screen. Screen two. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's get. Uh, There we go, Phil Murray. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get some images. Uh, copy link. Is that one? Is that the other one? Yes. Okay, so we need this in an image tag, right? Image, H, is it source? Yeah, source equals thus. So let's just see what that looks like. <laughs> uh, reveal on File Explorer. Okay, so I save this, and we've got a picture of Bill, uh, Bill Murray. There's a website called Phil Murray, and if you just change, like, like if I just change one little bit of it, it gives me a new um, image, I think. Yeah, so I wonder if, he, I th do they, are they different images? Oops. <laughs> I don't know if they're random or not. Some of these some of these sites will give you like random images for each. No, it's the same one. So if but you have if you change it, you know, two hundred. Uh, let's make this one 
180. So if I save this, now I've got a bunch of different, <laughs> there we go. I've got a bunch of different uh, Bill Murray pictures. Um, and I want to do the same thing. I want to do this in a flex box, right? So we create a div to put it inside. Let's give it a class equals container. Because normally you don't want you don't you there's it, most of the time you don't want CSS applying to like every div on the page or every image on the page you want you want to at least specify a class to kind of keep it uh, keep your CSS scope to what you actually want to do right yeah um, and so what what did I call this we called it container. Container. We're going to make this uh, display flex, right? And we'll reload. So now we've put it all in one row, just like we said before. Notice it also like made everything the same height, mm -hmm. which is weird. But that's what it does by default. So everything is the same height. They're not all the same width. I wonder if we made these columns, right? What was that? Uh, flex direction? Uh, column. Let me save that. And now they're the same width. They're all one big column. So neither of this is really like what we're looking for, but it's an interesting start. So let's get rid of the column. Let's, we're going to stick with row. And we're going to, what was the dis, uh, display wrap? Flex wrap, wrap. Uh, flex wrap or flex flow. Oh, right. So what was flex flow? It was both wrap and call. Oh, I see. So flex flow, flex flow. like row wrap. Oops. So when we do that, okay, now we're at two call. Now we're now it wraps around. Um, let's make this a little bigger. Uh, so what else do we want to do? We want uh, the space around. Is that justify content? And we're going to do space evenly. Let's try that. Nope, that didn't work. Space around. There we go. Okay. Um, notice that it's not putting any spaces between the, the um, between the, the rows. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. So what else do we have available? We have CSS tricks. Space between, adjust our context. Space between, you want to see what that looks like? Yeah. It's pretty similar, but then it pushes the bottom two away from each other, if you notice that. And if we push <laughs> in, so now we have three. OK. So there's always space in between. When there's three, it spaces them out evenly. When there's only two, it pushes them to the side. Um, okay, so that's that's one thing. Now let's let's make a nav bar. Show you how I think when how flex boxes really start to um, uh, come into their own a little bit. So we're gonna have a div here, class logo. And then we're and uh, my logo here. What is a nav? Uh, it's a different element, like div or whatever. There's it, and I think it is set for the the purpose of it. Or I say HTML. I don't know exactly what the purpose of it. I people use it for nav bars, which is you know like the the top navigation for a website. Mm -hmm. Um. A set of navigation links. Okay, so I'm not using it correctly. I'm not using it. So one thing to look up, I think, is a good thing to get to know is semantic HTML, I think is what it is. So if you go to semantic elements, 
Um, these are the semantic elements which which define a website, right? Um, in other words, these if you have if you have content on a website, <clears throat> you want to, when possible, you want to use these semantic uh, HTML uh, headers in part because if someone's using a screen reader to read this, um, the, it, it makes it easier for them to, because they can't see what the screen looks like, it makes it easier for them to understand, oh, this is information in the footer. Oh, this is the main section. Oh, this is, a, um, this is an article. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So it, it helps categorize what your content is. So nav actually is a set, uh, should be a set of uh, like links. Okay, so let's let's treat it as such. Let's say about uh, uh, nav. So how do we do this? Inside a set of navs, uh, let's do spans. And we'll say about, or maybe we should do links. Let's do links. So if we do a href about HTML, We'll just do some web, some pages that don't exist yet. We'll do home. That's just here. About, we'll do FAQ. I'm the worst typist in the world. Um, and then finally, help, which arguably is kind of the same as FAQ. Okay, so let's save this and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it, it puts it it puts these four links right here. Now we want these links over here, right? So how do we get these links over here? Well, we could do that float thing, right, that you're talking about. So let's let's do that and see how that looks. What is it? Uh, nav float left or right? Save that. Now it floats over here. And notice that this stuff all jumps up, which is yeah. a pain in the ass, because that's not what we wanted, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not what we want. So what if we made uh, what if we made this nav? First let's give it a class. Let's call it um, class main nav. That's not a great name, but it'll have to do. And then main nav, and we do another display flex. Oops. Okay, cool. So we've got a flex bar up here now, uh, but it just doesn't do anything. We've got everything over here. That's no good, right? We mm -hmm. want it over here. Um, and what do we want over on this corner? Well, we want some sort of logo, right? Because that's what that's the what you have to do on a website. It always has to be a logo. So if we do, um, if we just did like logo uh, span. Logo. Again, we got it all crunched up here. So how do we get space in between here and push all of this to this side? Any yeah, guesses? The space between the nav bar and the images? Yeah, we want, we want all of the space here that's currently <laughs> here. We want it in between the logo and home. So all of this gets pushed over to this side. Um, can we give the logo and the um, nav bar different classes and justify one to the right and justify one to the left? Oh, or so like give, like give the span, equal. like give this be like class equals left or something? Yeah. Or could we do the space between? Let's try the space between, see what happens.
uh, justify content space between. Cool. It's not quite what we want, right? So we want yeah. just between logo and home, and we want all these kind of squished over here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what I would suggest. What if we took this span out? Oops. Okay. And then we wrap this whole thing. Let's wrap it in header. Okay, so now we have a header and we have a span and then we have this nav class and everything inside of it. it so these four things are inside nav. Now what you can imagine with this is you've got a header and now we can make this header a, um, a flex box. So let's do header, display, flex, and then justify content, space between. Now you've got logo over here and you've got home about FAQ help over there. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. Now let's say we want some space in between here. Um, this flex stuff is not actually helping us anymore. So let's get rid of it for now. Let's just get rid of all this. We reload and now we've got a little bit of space and that might be adequate, right? Mm -hmm. Or we might say, Something like uh, we could do class main nav. Um, and then we want it to, what is it? Oh, these are A's, right? These are anchors. So an anchor, a main, uh, an anchor inside main nav should have. I don't know. Will margin work? Margin 2M. Yeah. Okay. So that's probably not that much. Maybe just a half M. And now they've got some space. So in this way, like, with Flexbox, now there's something even more, uh, something is slightly different, but similar to Flexbox called Grid, which we can look at too, if you're interested. Um, but with Flexbox, you can kind of, with most websites, you can kind of break them down into, um, uh, you can break them down into rows and columns, right? So like, for instance, the first, for a website, let's say it has a header, it has a main content and as a footer. You could almost imagine that as a flex box with as one column. And then each column can be broken up into rows. And then those rows can also be broken up into columns, which can also can be broken up into rows. <laughs> um, so you can get a little carried away with it, but it does allow most things sort of lay out in some fashion. You could lay them out using flex box and it becomes this very, very useful tool to, to lay certain things out. Um, let's try something a little different though. Let's get rid of this and let's change this to display grid. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now we're back to one column again. Interesting. Uh, so let's look up CSS tricks grid. Is this really what we want? Which I don't know. I thought there was a really good cheat sheet for that. Well, let's try this. Huh? I thought there was a really nice CSS tricks thing for grid as well. Let's look somewhere else. CSS grid. Ah, 
a complete guide to grid. There we go. Okay, so we've got a container display grid. Great. Uh, now we can establish uh, rows and columns. Grid template rows, grid template columns. So if we do this, copy this over here. Uh, and what do we want here? I don't know. What are the, is it? Yeah, that's it. I forget what this stands for. Let's try and save that. There we go. Okay. So what did I just do? Um, you want three columns and two rows? Yeah. And these, these FR, what FR stands for, let's see if we can figure it out from here. Uh, FR. Fractional units. So you could do, for instance, if you wanted the middle column to be bigger and the second and the first the well, the second row to be or the first row to be bigger. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> So the first row is three three sizes, and then, yeah, this is sort of weird. So it doesn't stretch the images. It just makes the row bigger. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but I think, I think we could do this. Let's just do columns. Let's not worry about rows. So this is a grid with three columns, okay? Okay. Um, and then, what? let's see, what's another thing we can do with grid? That's not it. Let me start it where the complete grid grid, yeah. Um, grid's a little more complicated, but there's something called grid gap. Uh, basically, you can you can create any kind of grid you want, and it doesn't have to be equal units. So this is kind of showing like you can have some sort of layout with all kinds of stuff. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for gap. Column gap, row cap. Yeah, okay, so let's make a row gap. Of 3M, or 2M is fine. And now you've got a gap, a forced gap of, of that, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, so you can lay things out. This is something, if you remember this show that we were in, improvise, I hope it, the website's still up. Um, Black mirror. See if we're the top hit. We are. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is what this is a show we did. This is a grid. Uh, and then, and what I did was, uh, you click on this, and it changes the grid layout. It pushes you up to this top corner, and put, and adds a bio. Oh, that's cool. So now you can inspect this page and find out how we actually did this. Cool. Cause one thing is I don't think I don't think the 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 image like you see how um you see how it just sort of flips these images? Mm -hmm. I think it's just it's just defining differently where this image is. It's not like rendering a new image. It just pushes the image or into a different place. Very cool. Oh what a good looking cast, huh? there we go <laughs> anyway so that was that was what i was trying to learn this is a typical thing i would do it's like i was trying to figure out how grid works and so i would at the time i was learning grid um i was making this website so okay. cool uh, what was another one? There was another one I made. I wonder if I could even find it anymore. That used grid and it did that picture thing that I was describing last week, I think. Kelly.com. Now there's nothing in here that's going to... Kelly.com. 
Um, okay. Nope. I have no idea how to find it anymore. I have to actually go into the website and fart around. Um, but it was basically, a, a, it's, it's similarly uses a grid and allows you to like, imagine that you, let's say there's empty space here in the grid, you click on this and it would move this picture over to that empty space and so on. Oh. Anyway. Um, so there you go. That's a little introduction to, to flex and grid. Plenty of things to uh, play around with if you're, if you're curious. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one thing you could do, like it would be really nice to lay out something in this grid. Like, let's say you, let's give this really specific iterations or, or things. So like, um, like 30 pixel images. So we got 30 by 30. And then we're going to do 30 by 60 and 60 by 30 I don't know what that let's I don't know what that leaves yet so if we go back over here I gotta save it first oh those are tiny let's make it 300 then these might be too big now Okay. Okay, so we got thir this is 30 by 30, 30 by um, 60, 60 by 30. So the next one, let's make it, oops, gosh darn it. Um, So Let's this website it. categorizes images by size, and that's yeah. all you're doing, saying the size? Yeah, there might be also a way to get like a random, just get a random Phil Murray image. Let's go to Phil Murray and see. So you can get grayscale versions. I wonder if there's a... I guess not. There's other places that give you random images. Um... So like if you, if you say uh, image placeholder, um, 21 best image placeholder generators. So there's Phil Murray, there's Lorem Flicker. That's interesting. Uh, Place Kitten, just kittens. Bacon Mockup. <laughs> Place Bearded, I don't know. Lorem Pixel. Oh, yeah, get, uh, of course, Nicolas Cage versions. Bears. Steven Seagal. <laughs> um, yeah, and they're just, the idea is you just, it gives you just fake images, based, not fake images, but randomish images to use as placeholders for your website. All right, so we've got this. I want to do uh, 300... Or 300 and then we're going to go 500 okay see how it pushes it all the way down that's interesting is that because the row is a yeah the row ends are here but what i want to do is i want to get this up into here so there's a way to do with grid where you can like you can you can create these sort of interesting collages where this one would actually be up in here. Hmm. Um, but I can't remember how to do it. <laughs> it would take a while for us to figure it out. Um, but you could so you're not you're not with Gridbox. You're not the the point of it is you're not um, confined to um, rows and columns essentially. Uh, I mean, oh. you sort of are, but I mean, let's see if we can. So is not. that where you're talking about where 
in the row, you can have columns inside of the row. So then we would just make that first column in that row, in that first row, two rows. Yeah. So you, you might have a, you might have a, you might have, let's see. So basically we have one, two, three, we have one, two, three, four, 300 pixel spots. So what if we made, okay, so let's make this, let's try this. Let's try and figure this out. If we have, we're basically trying to make four column, a four column thing, right? And we want to make, uh, and, but we want to, instead of doing FR, we want to do uh, 300 pixel, 300 pixel, 300 pixel, or let's make them smaller. 200 pixel, 2 pixel, 100 pixel, uh, 200 pixel. I think there's a more efficient way to write this, but let's just try that. Okay, so now we have, okay, that really is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it just do that? Um, let's do rows as well, see what, oops. Uh, save. Okay, so that it's the, the, we have these grids one, two, three, four images that start every two hundred pixels, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. Um, so what if we made the let's pick different image sizes. Wherever it says three hundred, let's make it. 200 and then wherever it says 600 let's make it four 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 okay 200 200 400. let's make this Um, so you can see how things kind of start to lay out, but, but you wait, basically you can say like, I want an image that starts, starts here and goes down to this column. And I want an image that starts here. Let's, let's try and get this third image, um, to do what I'm thinking here, which is we want an image to cover two places on the grid, basically. Let's see if we can figure this out. Here we go. Right, 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 right. Example, okay, header. There we go, grid template areas. Header, 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 header. Aha, aha, aha. So, okay, so with this, this case, right, so we have a header. You see how the grid template areas are, are labeled now? Mm -hmm. So it's header, 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 header. That means these four uh, contiguous pieces are the header. And so the thing that you define as header, grid area header, ends up in that spot. So if we wanted to... Um, so let's make, uh, let's give these uh, classes. Class equals A. This is terrible. This is a terrible name for a class, but. Call this A, B, C. Okay, uh, so A we want in the, uh, A we're gonna wanna be uh, in the top spot, right? So we need grid template areas. Let's, let's copy these two rows. Tell me if I'm, if you're starting to lose interest. <laughs> um, 
So grid template area. So we're going to go, we want A in the first spot, right? Okay, so it's a, okay. Oh, shoot, I got rid of something. Um, I'm missing, what am I listening? Grid template columns. Um, we want A, we want B in the second one, we want, C oh wait, sorry, A, B, C, D. Do we have to have a comma? Okay, so in the second row, we're going to have E, B, uh, F, E. Okay, so we're going to have, we're going to have, uh, oh, let's do CC. Okay. F, B, A, B, C, this doesn't make any sense, D, E, Okay, so I'm trying to make two rows here. A will be its own picture, D will be its own picture, E will be its own picture, and so will F. Then there'll be a CC and a BB. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, so you're just describing the pictures to their location in the grid. Right. So then we have, uh, let's see, image A... Uh, we need to say grid area A, grid area A. Uh, grid, image B is grid area B. Image C is grid area C. There's probably some more efficient way to do this, but... F. Okay, so we got all those. Great. Let's save this. And then we need two more pictures. E and F. Let's just see what happens before we get even more precise here. Okay, kind of what we're trying to do here. We Let's get gr rid of the grid gap. Or row gap. Oh, let's just make the row. The gap is 1M. There we go. Nice. Um, and let's make the sizes. Oh, actually, let's make the grid. Let's make the grid gap uh, 20 pixels. Then we can do something cool, I think. So, great. Okay, so look at let's look at the first row. So it goes one, two, three, right? Notice that mm -hmm. this image is a little short, right? Mm -hmm. So let's pick an image that's 20 pixels wider and see if that fixes it. Oh no! These let's let's make pics, sh, pic, uh, pictures that are that are smaller. So let's make this 180 and see if that helps. Might be 190 is what we need. There you go. Starting to let's make these 190. Okay, so things are starting to kind of line up. Uh, instead of f 400, let's say 380. Instead of 600, let's make this also 190. So 
So it's not quite doing what I want it to, but I think I'd have to like sit down with pen and paper to get exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. And obviously you'd want different pictures, but this gives you a very small sort of window and the idea that you can make these sort of collage kind of things where not everything is the same size and things can overlap columns or rows. Um, so it allows you to do some cool things. And, and because it's all defined by CSS, you know, with JavaScript, you can change the classes basically. So like I can tell, like these classes are all specified right now. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but we could through JavaScript by like clicking on something, let's say there's a button to click and it's like randomizes it or something. It changes, it can change the, um, it can change what the class is for a particular image, which will then automatically shift it within the grid. Okay. If that makes any sense. So for instance, um, let's say th this example here, uh, starter layouts, let's look at the monopoly board one. So this is a monopoly board that somebody set up. Well, it's not really a monopoly. It's like a game board. And you can imagine there's these there's these spots all along the grid, and you could imagine like a, 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 an image that represents your player's uh, your player's piece, and you can just move it around the board by changing the class and telling it to actually be in a different spot on the grid. So it's never it's not moving around within the HTML, but the CSS just tells it to be in a different place. Okay. Anyway, That's cool. and now my, my dogs are barking at something, so. Yeah. All right, do you have any, uh, do you have any other questions? I, f I fear. Yeah, I think that's it. That's the can you, thing can you hear those surprised. damn dogs? Yeah. Jesus. What's going on? Somebody's delivering something. <laughs> oh, and they rang the doorbell, which is really scary. Mm. All right. I, I'm sorry, All did right. you have a question? No. <laughs> Yeah, that was, the float thing was the only thing that was pissing me off, but now that I know about Flexbox. Well, see, that's the thing. I think that's a really great example of like how something is a um, is pain point. Like float was one of the best tools people had for a long time for like laying things out in different ways, but it has its it has its frustrations. Um, yeah. And as you were experiencing it. And because of those frustrations, people are like, it's got to be a better way. Well, what about if we had these things called, you know, uh, basically you could, you could create a row and have different ways to describe how the things in that side, that row lay out. And suddenly you have this tool that it works a lot more like how you intuitively want it to work. Uh, and then as soon as Flexbox came along and like, yeah, but what about grids? You know, what if, what if, what if we had things that are laid out in a grid. And so both those specifications came along at, at about the same time, I think. And, um, and it makes laying out so much easier. Now that the, the, tr or the trick or the drawback of these things is that on older browsers, like really old browsers, the kind of browsers that most people don't use anymore, like IE 9 or 10, these things don't work very well. Uh, IE 11, which is the last version of Internet Explorer, they do tend to work pretty well. But um, yeah, it's just it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, you know we're kind of waiting for this this more idealized future where 99.9% uh, .9 of the world's users don't use Internet Explorer anymore. <laughs> and once that happens, you know, there's a lot of it, it'll make website building easier in fact most i think a lot of companies already don't support ie 11 anymore uh that i don't that well that uh, hasn't been updated in a few years so anyway right. i think it's time to you need to to jump into some javascript i'm almost there i've got one more css lesson then bootstrap then javascript okay well Bootstrap. Bootstrap will be that pain point. It's like, oh, there's so much work to just make a website look reasonably good. And then you add Bootstrap and it's like, ah, yeah, the website looks all right now. <laughs> nice. All right. I will right. talk to you later. Sounds good. Thanks again.